Hi everyone, I'm Alex McCrickard. Springtime is my favorite time to be out fly fishing for native brook trout in the state of Virginia. Brook trout are the state freshwater fish, and they're actually the only native trout to the Virginia. They've been here since the last ice age. When the glaciers receded, brook trout were actually left behind in our high elevation mountain trout streams. They're really an indicator of clean water and pristine habitat, and they're really a sentinel species to the definition. Uh, they're oftentimes referred to as the canary in the coal mine, and brook trout will be the first to go if pollution or habitat degradation impacts a stream negatively. Virginia is really blessed with native brook trout water. We have just over 600 streams that are documented as holding native brook trout, totaling for more than 2,000 miles of native brook trout water, which is actually more than all other southeastern states combined. Recent rains have uh, given us some high flows on our mountain trout streams here in Virginia, which is actually the nicest time of the year. It really spreads the water out. It's a fun time of the year to fish dry droppers. So I've got a nine foot four X leader on with a, a bushy wolf, gray wolf here. And I've got a beadhead hairs here underneath, underneath. And doing the dry dropper technique really works well because it allows you to imitate some of the mayflies that are hatching this time of the year with that surface fly. But also that nymph underneath it uh, it really covers your subsurface uh, feeding fish as well. It's important to remember that 90% of a trout's diet is subsurface. While we all love to, to fish, fish dry flies and see the visual eat, it can be really productive to drop a nymph underneath your dry fly. So uh, good, good hole up here, big deep hole. We'll see if we can't move anybody on the dry or the nymph. Um, and what I'm looking for is if this dry fly dips underwater, I'm going to set the hook because not only is it, is it my dry fly, but it's also acting as my strike indicator as well. So we'll, we'll do a couple in this run here, see if we can't find any brook trout. Oh, that looks good coming down on that seam there. Oh, look at that guy. That's a gorgeous fish. That's a great, great colored up, colored up male here. Wow, look at this fish. Just stunning colors on this male here. That fish could be pushing 10 inches. Just a beautiful fish. Hold on, buddy. So some of these males get really fired up in colors. You can see this fish is just really pumpkin orange on the underside, almost red there. Give him another drink here. You can really see the markings on this fish really well. Gorgeous red fins with the white, white tips. You can see those worm-like markings really well along their back. This fish has got great red dots with blue halos. Gorgeous adult fish. This fish is probably every bit of 10 inches um, and just absolutely stunning colors on these brookies. So beautiful fish. We'll send him home. Again, I'm going to gently cradle him in the water and let him swim out on his own terms when he's ready. There he goes. Oftentimes it can be a smart idea to flip over some rocks when you're out on the stream and try to figure out a little bit about what the fish are feeding on. Here you can see we've got a, a, a few large caddis pupa that are here. They look like they're about a size 14 to a size 12. So I know that the brook trout are likely feeding on that this time of the year. Also you can see there are some um, Mayfly nymphs here, they look like they're about a size 14. And most of these mayfly nymphs are dark olive to uh, brown in color. A lot of these are gonna be sulfur mayfly nymphs. Um, so when I'm thinking about matching the hatch, I'm first thinking about matching the size of the fly, then followed by color. So any dark beadhead pheasant tail or beadhead hairs here in a 14 or 16 will do well. And any, any caddis pupa imitation is a good choice this time of the year. As the day is warming up, we're starting to get some mayflies hatching. We've got a small sulfur mayfly here, about a size 16. Um, we're going to start to see them really throughout the rest of the springtime. Um, these yellow-bodied mayflies uh, provide a great food source for a brook trout. 
If you do choose to get out and fish during the pandemic, it's essential that you do so safely and responsibly. We're asking anglers to please practice social distancing and remember, stay at least six feet from other anglers. Also, don't forget to take the Virginia Trout Slam Challenge this spring. Today, we've been catching brook trout, but in order to complete the Trout Slam Challenge, we're asking anglers to try to catch a brown, brook, and a rainbow all in one day. Happy fishing, we'll see you on the water.